The Wild Coast is a fitting description for the strip of coastline along the former Transkei. It is as rugged as it is beautiful, with rough, powerful seas, dramatic rocky shores, and endless rolling green hills. It is a setting for iconic rural scenes. A pot boiling in the early morning, children playing in twilight, livestock walking briskly down the road. It is no wonder that this area is a favoured tourist destination for both local and international travellers. But beneath this idyllic rural picture is a struggle for survival. Five is a crayfish diver. It is all he knows how to do, the only way he can feed his family and earn an income. His life and the lives of so many in these areas depends on what the sea can provide. Crayfish, also known as lobsters, but without the claws of its international cousins, are from the same family as crabs. They have a hard, brick-red exterior shell with orange spines and blue-green markings on the head. Their long tails end in a fan-like shape. This is used to propel it rapidly to cover. They use their antenna to protrude from their shelters and are directed towards any moving object. It is this that divers are looking out for. They also have strong legs enabling them to cling to rocks under turbulent conditions. If either the antenna or the legs break off, they grow back, but at a slower rate. They are found in the warm waters along the east coast all the way up to Kenya. They live in holes and crevices along rocky shore areas. Crayfish divers must always keep an eye on the moon and tides because they can only dive at spring low tide when the waters have receded furthest and they can access the deeper rocks. Five has been waiting for this time Today the moon is near full and the waters are calm. Good for diving. Five gets ready at his home not far from the beach. Five learned how to dive from an early age by watching his brothers do it and stealing a pair of goggles to join in. It has since become his occupation, but he can't do it alone. He is joined by his two friends, Kabalas and Zweli, his mates since childhood. Diving is often a communal activity, with some divers maintaining fires on the beach so they can warm up after the session. Between them, they hope to catch as many as they can sell later. Of course, their catch should be limited by fishing legislation, which is government's attempt to ensure the sustainability of the crayfish industry. Stocks are managed by a closed breeding season from the 1st of November to the end of February, as well as bag, gear and size limits. Divers are given subsistence permits, which allow them to take eight crayfish a day but eight is not enough to make a living out of. Hi, and the seven system tetra permit. Yeah, dive and car. But on the land bill, no bumpers are cool of just eight. Cool of just eight was in San Duin. Magas knew so whole men does a cool of fish if we taste as a eight. Spend in Sanyan, who went San Duin and cool of just eight. The permits also restrict the size of the catch. The carapace, which excludes the tail and the antenna, must be longer than 65 millimeters. Breeding occurs in the summer when the season is closed. The male lobster places a packet of sperm in the underbelly of the female. When the female is ready to lay eggs, she scratches open the packet to release the sperm and they then become fertilized. The eggs develop on the tail of the lobster before they are released into the sea. The larvae will then drift in ocean currents for 12 to 15 months. In this time, they will undergo 11 transformations. They then settle onto the rocky sea floor, turning into young lobsters about 5 centimeters long. 
adult rock lobsters will grow for 7 to 10 years before becoming sexually mature, which is why the government tries to limit catching to within a specific season to give them a chance. Five, Zweli and Kabbalas are hard at work battling currents in dirty water and getting what they can. It can be a dangerous occupation. A diver died in this very area a year ago and they are fully aware of the risk involved. Divers must also be aware of eels that are often found near crayfish. Crayfish use eels as a defense system against octopus, their main predator. As a eel, bite it. I look on the crayfish. I'm putting the hands, I'm putting inside the eat. <laughs> big. El is a security for crayfish. There's a big security for crayfish eat. <laughs> Further along the beach, monitors walk rocky shores, checking that everything harvested from the sea is regulation size and within the limit. My job is to count all the species that come from the sea and the big limit and the sizes. These monitors are employed by the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. They have no power to arrest or fine people, only to collect data. But sometimes we can ask a compliance to, 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 to stop the, the, the harvesters. And the harvesters, when they see compliance, they run away. Compliance, or nature conservation, is the only law enforcement. And when they are around, fishermen and divers obey the permits. But they rarely check up. The divers are returning with their catch, and it has not been a good day. Yo, the water is very dirty. The problem this week, yo, is too much rain. I'm catching only these two clays. Yes, you see, only two crayfish, only. The God does, the problem, the God doesn't give me lucky today. Five and all the other divers will try and sell their catch. They will sell each at around 20 rand, going up according to size. At the moment, there are not many places for them to sell their catch. They target tourists at the backpackers, as well as holidaymakers in beach cottages. Some backpackers also buy off them, even though it's not permitted to do so. The reason for this is the government has set up appointed buyers as a way to control the industry. In the Chani area, the buyer is Lusitania Holdings, which set up a project with tanks to keep the crayfish and send nationally and internationally. It is known locally as The Project and was very successful because locals had a stable market that would always take their catch and at a price higher than their competitive prices sold individually to tourists. The project also ensured that the permits were followed. So we landed at what we call a fame IPA. But we have a fame that we have to do with the permit. But it is now the beginning of May, more than two months into the season, and the project has remained closed. Lusitania is waiting for the government to issue their permit. Meanwhile, the employees keep the tanks running and sit idly by. As he has well said, we are going to have to change the future. We are going to have to change the future. We are going to have to change the future. We are going to have to change the future. We are going to have to change the future. We are going to have to change the future. We are going to have to change the future. We are going to have to change the future. We are going to have to change the future. We are going to have to change the future. With no project and the government preventing other businesses from buying, tourists are the only market for these divers. Five sells his two crayfish for 25 rand, which must now support him and his family until he is able to catch again at the next full moon. Yes, yes. The big bird today. I'm tired and really now. Later that evening, Five meets up with his buddies for drinks. This is often their only way of dealing with their frustrations and hardships. But though the day may be over, the crayfish harvest has not yet ended.
These women use long rods to fish for crayfish at night when the crayfish feed. They must navigate the low tide rocks with very little light. Crayfish are a predatory species, preying on brown mussels and limpets. The women spend time gathering limpets off the rocks and threading them onto fishing line which can be used as bait. It is then a long, cold night and the women spend hours fishing. The night's catch will be sold first thing in the morning to tourists and holiday makers. It is not only the adults who have spent the night fishing. Children as young as five and six have also been at it all night and will one day follow their father's footsteps to be skilled crayfish divers. With so many people harvesting off the rocks and diving for crayfish, and with no project encouraging people to stick to permit regulations, the ocean's natural resources are being stretched. Many people living here have no choice but to take as much as they can to try and get some form of income and feed their families. As populations increase, crayfish will become scarcer and scarcer. The rocks will become barren and the sea life will suffer and the proud Transkei Wild Coast will be no more. The way forward is for stakeholders to set up sustainable projects and education programs by developing skills that will create sources of income that are independent of the sea's harvest, like agriculture and arts and crafts. This could be supplemented by developing local government-approved seafood and marine-based businesses that reinvest money into the community and create jobs for its people. For example, if government granted seafood rights to a restaurant in the area, the divers would be able to earn a more sustainable income for themselves and their families. They would have a constant market for their catch and would be able to charge a far higher price by cutting out the middleman and removing distribution costs. It has the added advantage of ensuring that the profits from the sale of the crayfish do not leave the area and the restaurant would also provide jobs for the community. By injecting additional skills and income sources into the community, the divers won't be subjected to the unpredictable nature and often dangerous activity of crayfish diving. Yeah, I don't like to dive, I want to work. Banjal, the alarm bumping, the alarm, the straight as